Joining me is Rumor Willis, who is here to promote the Over the Love Tour, which is like a little of a postmodern cabaret, yeah. which you have said before. That's pretty dope. Yeah, Thanks I'm for really coming excited. on. Of course. Thank you for having Very me. Very happy to have you. So tell me, Over the Love, why the name and how did this initially just kick off? I played a show about, wow, almost like a year ago, I think, at Cafe Carlisle, and it was right after I'd finished Broadway out here. And my best friend and I just talked about it and thought, why don't we take this on the road and see if it would work? And it just kind of started coming together that way. And I picked Over the Love because I was trying to think of a way to reinvent cabaret because I feel some of the time that people tend to have not the best connotation <laughs> with cabaret. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't hear cabaret and people are like, yeah, let's go. But I wanted to kind of take back that word and make it a really fun night out, but still keep the intimate setting of a cabaret, which I love. And Over the Love kind of came up when we were talking because I thought, well, what's something that everybody experiences that the same, that we can all relate with the same experience, and it's love, because love, you know, it's not racist or sexist, it doesn't care how you grew up, where you're from, it will break your heart and make you feel madly in love, and it doesn't care about anything, so it's kind of a unifier, and I feel like it's something that people from everywhere, and every state you go to can kind of relate to, and I like that. Talk to you about some of the, the structure of your show, like, I know you've done numerous covers, yeah. and people could also compare you to Etta James. Talk about that a little bit. It's really fun. I try and take a lot of people who have inspired me and a lot of people who I look up to and find ways of reinventing songs or making them my own and, in a sense, halfway paying tribute to it and also re and hopefully trying to reinvent the wheel a little bit. And, make jazz a little bit more accessible to people. We have some comments already take, coming in. And awesome. remember, any comments you have, please send them. I'm going to be reading them off my phone here. Uh, Edward Sanchez says, do you like singing or acting? Uh, I like both. I mean, in a perfect world, I would be able to do singing, acting, and dancing all in one job. Especially dancing. Dancing yeah. with the stars. <laughs> It seems that like you're the only one to take Val to the Pantheon, a number one. <laughs> but Lori is lighting it up. I know. I think that they have a real chance. You think so? I think so. I think it's really between him and Sharna this year. What was it? Was there any time during your Dancing with the Stars stint that it really got difficult, that you really didn't think that you could win it at the end? I think that you always, or at least I always, tried to have it, just the hope in my head. And I never wanted to give up. I never wanted to allow myself to get in a place that was so dark that I wanted to give up. But it's definitely hard. It's grueling. You have no idea really until you're in there yourself of what you're in for. But there has to be one time when you just were like getting ready to come out and you were just not sure that this was going to be a 10. Sort of like what you did in the finale, all 10s. Yes and no. For me, here's the thing. Look, I'm so grateful to have won, and would I have been really upset if I didn't? For sure. But at the end of the day, it wasn't about winning a trophy for me, why I was doing it, to the core of it. Everybody wants to win, obviously. Yeah. But for me, it was pushing myself and finding greater confidence in myself and being able to just say that, yeah, I did this, and I did this completely by myself. I'm not riding on anybody's coattails. This is all about the work. Everything that I've earned is because of the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, win or lose, I will always walk away with that. So It's all about the work. Yeah. Uh, we have another comment. David Wilson, uh, what, do you hear, what do you do when people make hateful comments and unfairly, unfairly compare you to your mom? Uh, well, I don't ever really feel unfairly compared to her. I would never feel bad for being compared to my mom. She's <laughs> gorgeous. Um, but the thing is, at the end of the day, everybody's going to have an opinion, and everybody, not everyone's always going to love you. And you have to just keep in mind that if you choose to let other people's opinions of you and comments determine how you value yourself, then you'll never be happy regardless of what anybody says. Do you feel that because you are the child of two actors, that sometimes people may dismiss that the work that you're putting in in order to get the results that you are getting? 
Potentially, but I, I don't, I don't necessarily blame them for it because they might not know. They might not know what work I'm doing. They might, you know, I, I, I never want to judge somebody's perception as I wouldn't want my perception to be judged. Everybody's allowed to have an opinion. You know, we live in America. Yeah. So if your opinion is that you don't like me, all I would say is find out who I really am and what I do. And if you still don't like me after that, then that's your prerogative. It's like, that's totally cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, do you. If you don't like me, that's all good. I don't have to like everybody and you, not everybody has to like me. <laughs> uh, on your tour, is there a different side of, your, of yourself that you're giving to your fans? Um, maybe. I, I try and be as authentic as I possibly can because I think that that's what people connect and relate to. But when you're on stage, you definitely are a bit more glammed up and, you know, trying to give the Jessica rabbit look. But in general, I try to just unapologetically be myself. Yeah. <laughs> When you, I remember I saw you doing an interview in GMA and you were talking about when you just got in Chicago and that you wished you were Velma. Yeah. It's, I love being Roxy, but I think that my personality in real life probably fits alongside Velma a little bit more. What was the, the is it grueling getting ready for that? Like doing that type of show, doing, performing at that level on a regular basis? It's tough. I'm really in awe of the people that have been doing it for years because I did it for a few months and you have no life really. I mean, that has to be your whole life. I think Dancing with the Stars really prepared me for that because I don't think I would have been able to do it otherwise, but I feel like everything in my life has kind of come at a perfect time to continue to build to where I'm at right now. And it's pretty cool every time I get to kind of overtake a new challenge, something else presents itself to hopefully be able to conquer that. So when November 6th comes and the tour wraps up, what's the challenge after that that hopefully you get to conquer? I would love to continue working on my album and finish that and then hopefully do another tour with even more cities. And we've done mostly the Southeast, so I would love to kind of tackle the whole U.S. and see how much more I can kind of build and grow. We have another comment. Uh, Victoria Elizabeth Stimbola says, you look beautiful, Rumor. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Cochran says, Rumor, I love you and think you can do anything. We all know you can dance. It's <laughs> very sweet. Thank you. It seems that like being on uh, the Dancing with the Stars, it just seems like such a platform, such a almost like a little propane to add to the fire that of a already sparkling career. Do you feel that it really propelled the, your message and your whatever you're, what, what you're working on to different heights to new heights I feel like because I went in without an agenda of promoting anything and without being in a position where I feel like I kind of had to you know we have my image or whatever it was at the end of the day like I said I wanted to go in to learn how to dance and that was really my main goal but throughout that process you didn't know how to dance before well n not like that okay. I really wanted to get good and learn how to partner dance and ballroom dance yeah and i feel like throughout that process i had the ability to let people get to know me with my voice and not through a lens of either social media or tabloid magazines or false facts that you know people printed in 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 the news or things like that and I was really given the platform to just say again what I said you know he here's who I am mm -hmm. and just take the time to get to know that and if you still have your opinions after that that's fine but just get a chance to figure it out first how important was your partner in getting you through that process Val <laughs> yeah no I, th I think I couldn't have asked for a better partner and someone who knew that he could push me and could challenge me because I think it could be easy to back down on someone and I really appreciate his work ethic and his drive and the way that he challenged me every day to be better and I think that's a lot of the reason why I continually 
try and push myself and challenge myself now. So I'm, it's very important. We have another comment here uh, from a Carla o Osak. I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, and she says, who is your biggest musical influence? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, I mean, Etta James, Amy Winehouse, Billie Holiday, Nancy Sinatra, Sia, <laughs> Adele. I, could go I loved on your forever. cover of Bang Bang. Thank you. It's really nice. I love doing stuff like that that are really random and obscure songs that people may not don't know as much. Is there any songs that you haven't done that you would like to cover? So many. Um, I would love to try and, and do a Sia tune, but that is <laughs> woof. That, that is definitely tough. She is an artist and all in her own kind of spectrum. So, I mean, there's so many. There's so many artists that I, I would love to cover and, and continue to try out. And that's, I think, one of the great parts of being able to be on tour and creating new music is you can really see what works for you and try different stuff out. Would you cover any of your father's songs? <laughs> Maybe, you never know. I want to learn how to play the harmonica. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> uh, we have another comment. Uh, Robin Cruz, like, you set that tango on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. So, how are all the Willis sisters different? What sets you all apart? I think that we each have different creative outlets. Um, Tulula is an incredible visual artist. She actually drew one. Uh, a whole design for one of the t-shirts that I saw on tour that I asked her to do her version of Over the Love with her characters and so it's this little character with a heart that's running after it so it's pretty cool and Scout is an incredible songwriter and has a beautiful voice it's totally different from mine and, and totally has her own niche which is so cool and I feel like even though we're all a bit different and have different outlets for our creativity we really come together and when we are together it's almost like what was the the superhero with the rings captain planet we're like captain planet yeah. with sisters or the wonder twins yes exactly <laughs> it's like a nice little like group and it's just so and you were talking about going, stories about going to disneyland and just like people coming to talk out to you guys yeah <laughs> and your father's like ah he's just my dad he's it's my dad <laughs> We have one more comment. Tessa Smith says, very centered and charming woman. Thank you. So where else can, if they haven't, where are you hitting next? Like, where can they find you if people are watching this now and they want to come watch you? So we're playing tomorrow mm -hmm. at 1130 at the Cutting Room. And then we're bouncing around. And I probably should know all of these dates. <laughs> but all of the dates are up on my Instagram. We posted about it quite a bit. And then if you go to overthelovetour.com, all of the dates are there and all of the tickets. And we still have quite a few dates left, and so people should come on out and check it out. It's a really fun show. Good luck. Thank you so much. And congratulations. Like, yeah, let's go. But I wanted to kind of take back that word and make it a really fun night out, but still keep the intimate setting of a cabaret, which I love. And Over the Love kind of came up when we were talking because... I thought, well, what's something that everybody experiences that the same, that we can all relate with the same experience? And it's love, because love, you know, it's not racist or sexist. It doesn't care how you grew up, where you're from. It will break your heart and make you feel madly in love and it doesn't care about anything. So it's kind of a unifier, and I feel like it's something that people from everywhere and every state you go to can kind of relate to and I like that. Talk to you about some of the, the structure of your show. Like, I know you've done numerous covers yeah. and people could also compare you to Etta James. Talk about that a little bit. Get up. I know. I think that they have a real chance. You think so? I think so. I think it's really between him and Sharna this year. What was it? Was there any time during your Dancing with the Stars stint that it really got difficult, that you really didn't think that you could win it at the end? I think that you always or at least I always tried to have it, just the hope in my head and I never wanted to give up. I never wanted to allow myself to get in a place that was so dark that I wanted to give up. But it's definitely hard. It's grueling. You have no idea really until you're in there yourself of what you're in for. But there has to be one time when you just were like getting ready to come out and you were just not sure that this was going to be a 10. Sort of like what you did in the finale, all 10s. Yes and no. For me, here's the thing. Look, I'm so grateful to have won, and would I have been really upset if I didn't? For sure. But at the end of the day, it wasn't about 
winning a trophy for me, why I was doing it to the core of it. Everybody wants to win, obviously, yeah. but for me, it was pushing myself and finding greater confidence in myself and being able to just say that, yeah, I did this and I did this completely by myself. I'm not riding on anybody's coattails. This is all about the work. Everything that I've earned is because of the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when I lose, I will always walk away with that. So it's all about the work. Yeah. Uh, we have another comment. David Wilson. Uh, what do you hear? What do you do when people make hateful comments and unfairly unfairly? Joining me is Rumor Willis, who is here to promote the Over the Love tour, which is like a little of a postmodern cabaret, yeah. which you have said before. That's pretty dope. Yeah, Thanks I'm for coming really excited, on. Of course. Thank you for having Very me. Very happy to have you. So tell me, Over the Love, why the name, and how did this initially just kick off? I played a show about, wow, almost like a year ago, I think, at Cafe Carlisle, and it was right after I had finished Broadway out here. And my best friend and I just talked about it and thought, why don't we take this on the road and see if it would work? And it just kind of started coming together that way. And I picked Over the Love because I was trying to think of a way to reinvent cabaret because I feel some of the time that people tend to have not the best connotation <laughs> with cabaret. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't hear cabaret and people are like, it's really fun. I try and take a lot of people who have inspired me and a lot of people who I look up to and find ways of reinventing songs or making them my own and in a sense halfway paying tribute to it and also re and hopefully trying to reinvent the wheel a little bit and make jazz a little bit more accessible to people. We have some comments already take coming in. And awesome. remember, any comments you have, please send them. I'm going to be reading them off my phone here. Uh, Edward Sanchez says, do you like singing or acting? Uh, I like both. I mean, in a perfect world, I would be able to do singing, acting, and dancing all in one job. Especially dancing. Dancing yeah. with the stars. <laughs> it seems that you're the only one to take Val to the Pantheon, a number one. <laughs> but Lori is lighting